Hi guys, Olive here here today to show you the books I'm planning on reading in May 2020. April has been a spectacular reading month for me. I have no idea if I'll be able to keep up that exact same momentum in May, but I am certainly going to try. Starting with the list of books that I've been working my way through over the past year or so, my selection off of my classics TBR this month will be Silas Marner by George Eliot. This is the story of a lonely, unlucky old man who is at his absolute lowest when he is robbed of his entire life savings. But things start to take a turn for the better when a homeless little girl enters his life. This one is a whole lot shorter than the other Elliot novels I've taken on. I am quite curious to see what I think about this one. My five-star nonfiction prediction for the month of May will be In the Sanctuary of Outcasts by Neil White. This is a memoir of a man who did time for bank fraud at a federal prison in rural Louisiana. But this wasn't just any prison. It also doubled as the last community for people afflicted with leprosy in the continental United States. The opportunity to learn more about leprosy and learn what life is like for those afflicted is what mainly compelled me to make this a five-star nonfiction prediction, so I'm interested to see how much of that actually makes up this book. And the last list book that I'll be taking on during the month of May comes from my books that have been on my TBR The Longest project, that is Enduring Love by Ian McEwan. This is a very short novel all about a hot air balloon accident and its long-term impact on the witnesses. I have not read an Ian McEwan novel in such a long time. I can't even remember what was the last one I tried to take on, but this one is very short. I will probably finish it in a day. As I was looking back on the reading I've done so far in 2020, I realized that completely unintentionally I've been picking up one romance book per month. And now that I'm on to that, I've decided to just keep that habit going. I'm really enjoying reading romance. So during the month of May, I'm going to continue and read A Prince on Paper by Alyssa Cole which continues the Reluctant Royal series. I read the second book back in February. This one changes things up a bit and sets up two characters from previous books that we already know, as opposed to the last book when we only knew one of the main characters, one of the love interests. I've seen many different people say that this one is their favorite of the series, so it seems pretty much guaranteed to be a good time. I'm also really craving some good historical fiction during the month of May, so my plan is to pick up Orhan's Inheritance by Aline Ohanisi. On. This book hops back and forth in time between the 1990s and the final years of the Ottoman Empire. In this book, a young man, meaning Orhan, inherits his grandfather's rug making business after the elderly man is found dead. However, completely inexplicably, the family's estate is willed away to what seems like a complete stranger. Finding out the connection to this stranger means digging into his family's past. A book that the times we're living in compelled me to want to read this month is On Immunity by Eula Biss. This is a very short nonfiction book all about the changing attitudes toward vaccines over the years. I'm very much hoping that in the moment I'm filming this and in the moment that you're seeing this, that scientists are making good progress toward coming up with a vaccine for the coronavirus. But I know for certain that even when there is a vaccine, crossing my fingers, that there will be a lot of different discussions about that vaccine, its distribution, and whether or not people could be compelled to take it. I very much anticipate those types of conversations. During this entire situation, I have felt kind of torn in between wanting to be informed and not wanting to cause myself anxiety. My solution to that problem is to not overwhelm myself with information. I'm going to keep it at about one book per month and this will be that book for me this month. Now on to something much more lighthearted and exciting. I'm actually going to be participating in a readathon this month. Natalie from Curious Reader and Emma from A Cup of Books, two of my go-to booktubers, just like period, but also especially for nonfiction on booktube, have teamed up to create Springathon, which is a two week long readathon focused on nature writing. I obviously really love nature writing, so I was on board the moment I heard about it. It's going to run from May 4th to May 17th, and they have provided some optional prompts in case you want them. The prompts are bird, water, animal, plant, and then travel slash destination. I am planning to loosely follow the prompts. I'm more going to be combining them than anything else, which is evidenced by my first selection for the readathon. That's The Salt Path by Rainer Wynn. This is a memoir detailing how the author and her husband decided to walk the 630 mile southwest coast path in England after not only finding out that her husband was terminally ill, but that they had lost their home and their livelihood. The cover of this book checks three different boxes 
boxes. You can see there are birds up here, there's water, and then there's also a dolphin at the bottom. And the subject matter is about travel slash a destination, meaning the end of the Southwest Coast Path. I've already been wanting to read this one, so this seemed like a really good opportunity to pick it up since it does check so many different boxes of those optional challenges. Plus, this one also seemed like a really good follow-up to A Walk in the Woods by Bill Bryson, which I read back in March. Then I have two upcoming releases that I'm going to be reading for the readathon that are both due to be published during the month of May. I was going to read them anyway, it just so happened that they perfectly suit the readathon challenges. First, there's Liquid Gold by Roger Morgan Grenville, which is the author's story of taking up beekeeping in midlife. And the second is The Book of Eels by Patrick Svensson, a natural history of eels that is called Part H's for Hawk by Helen MacDonald and Part The Soul of an Octopus by Cy Montgomery. I feel personally targeted. My last pick for Springathon and the final book on my TBR is a book that I unfortunately did not finish last year. I started it, I just never got around to finishing it. That book is Late Migrations by Margaret Rankle. This is a memoir told in essays that tell stories of the author's upbringing in Alabama, her connection to nature. Her brother's artwork is also featured in here. I loved what I read of this last year, so of course that made me feel guilty that I got distracted by other books and other commitments. But it also made me feel guilty because I attended an author event with Margaret Rankle last summer, and it was such a small event that it turned much more into a personal conversation. Just for example, by the end of the event, Margaret Rankle and I were exchanging book recommendations, and we were both gushing over Being Mortal by Atul Gawande. Because it was such a personal event, and I got to interact with the author so much just on a one on one basis, it made me feel 10 times worse that I hadn't finished this book, which just kind of kept the shame spiral going. But I am finally cutting off that spiral and cutting out some time to finally finish this book. I will leave all the details that you will need for Springathon down in the description box below in case you would like to join in. I highly recommend that you do so. There's also an Instagram challenge in case you like that kind of thing. And if you're looking for recommendations, I am actually planning on making a nature writing recommendations video here in the next few days. So keep an eye out for that. So those are all the books I'm planning on reading during the month of May. I'd love to hear from you if you've read any of these books, if you've heard of any of these books, or if they've now made their way onto your TBR after hearing about them in this video, you can put that or any other comments or questions you may have down in the comment section below. But if you prefer to find me somewhere other than YouTube, I am on a variety of different places on social media, and the links to all of my profiles will be in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.